and then if we don't get any 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 response from these institutions, then we'll proceed to court court on the basis of the information that will be put out there so that the family will get to know the status of the children. You must be standing on something very strong because to want to compel the police to take this action, we know that the police CID uh, two weeks ago came out to say that they indeed knew where exactly. the kids were exactly. and they've still not taken any yeah. action. Yeah. What's your suspicion? Yeah, well, there are a number of things. Engaging the family, there are a lot of things that we, we, uh, we got to know and we think that it would also aid the process. And then we've also had some private discussions with uh, people in the system in respect to this case. And uh, we think that particular. So we have information, and I think that uh, present such information to the court. They should be able to give us a favorable uh, answer as to what the family expect or what we need to know uh, in respect to this particular mm -hmm. So Very finally, that, right. Yeah. Um, so how soon should we begin to see you start taking steps? Well, from, from next week, we will engage these two bodies, the IGP and then the Parliament. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we will announce the, the, the next step that we are going to take in terms of what we are going to do with the court. Thanks very much, uh, Brian Thank Appiah, as uh, Executive Director of Child Rights International, uh, following up on this developing story. You're still watching Midday Life here on TV3. Now let's move on to other stories. And the Ghana Society of Radiographers has petitioned the Minister of Health and the Attorney General to restrain the Ghana Health Service from sending back chemical engineers to operate radiographic equipment across the country. The association maintains the move by the health service is an attempt to put the lives of Ghanaians at risk whilst trained radiographers remained unemployed. My colleague uh, Peter Kwawadato has more in this report. In November 2016, the National Tuberculosis Programs Manager informed the Ghana Society of Radiographers of the deployment of digital X-ray equipment for the tuberculosis case detection project. The project, the first in Africa, employs a software called CAD4, which helps in early detection of tuberculosis for early management. However, the project, which is an agreement between the Dutch and Ghana governments, did not factor in human resources to man machine health service is set to have sourced the assistance of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority for a waiver to train people in only radiation safety on June 30, 2017. An intervention from the professional body saw the submission of the names of 45 radiographers to the Ghana Health Service for employment. But securing financial clearance took months, leading to some of the unemployed graduate radiographers taking private appointments. With only two radiographers accepted to offer them a long awaited financial clearance, this compelled the Director General of Ghana Health Service to call for a roundtable meeting between all stakeholders to profess immediate, short, and long term measures. The Ghana Society of Radiographers, which is the umbrella body of all registered and licensed practicing radiographers, says the lives of Ghanaians is at risk with this arrangement. There was a timetable circulating purported to be used to train biomedical engineers to work as radiographers. And for this, the professional body felt it was a slap in the face of radiographers to train biomedical engineers for just 10 days to do the work of licensed allied health practitioners who have undergone rigorous training in an accredited university for four years. A retired radiographer and lecturer at the University of Ghana, Lawrence Arthur, called for public awakening. ...or procedure that is being done on that person. Lecturer at the biochemist department of the University of Ghana, Dr. William Entry, is worried a four-year course is being compressed into 10 days. If you take one body area or one body part, even the finger, just small area, depending upon the finger, is what the doctor wants to see has his own technique. What we have to do for the doctor to see what he wants. Can you use then this to do all these things? And you see, the curriculum they have drafted, it doesn't have any clinical component. That if I teach you how to do finger, then I have to take you to the clinical area, demonstrate to you how to position the patient. Each of these fingers have different techniques that we, we, we used to do. 
when we come to the restaurant, we have different techniques. The Ghana Society of Radiographers has meanwhile called on the Attorney General and Minister for Justice and the Ministry of Health to intervene or they would resort to court to restrain the Ghana Health Service from putting Ghanaian lives at risk. Breathe in. Ah, when you breathe, you hold the air. Hello, breathe in. Ah, ah, ah. It's okay. Breath. As you were, we're in the season of rain, and we've been warned by that we're going to experience a lot more rains this season. The Crow Municipal Assembly intends to pull down structures on waterways in the municipality. Municipal Chief Executive Joshua Nibote expressed worry over the rate of infrastructural development on waterways, saying it is getting out of hand. A report by my colleague Frederick Clarence Williams. The pressure on land for industrial and domestic purposes in the country appears to be affecting water bodies. Most water bodies in the country are drying up gradually due to human activities. The waterlogged area at Dungwa Okwegono has been taken over by private developers. Consistent filing, ground leveling and springing up of houses on the site has gradually reduced the size of the drain. Anytime it rains, there are experiences desertness. Against this backdrop, Municipal Chief Executive for Crowo, Joshua Nibote, expressed worry about the rate of development on waterways. He, however, vowed to go hard on resident and pull down structures sited on waterways. Any building on a waterway, as identified by engineers, we have to put it down. We have to pull it down and then let the water flow because the water will have to take its own course. In the area of taking its course, there's damage to life and property, and that is what we want to avoid. That Member of Parliament for the area, Elizabeth Afolukwe, tax the various assemblies to enforce bylaws to help minimize flooding. Nobody has the right to build uh, in the waterway. And so anybody who does that must face uh, the rigors of the law. Within the confines of the law, uh, when the measurements are taken and you fall within the waterway, the law has to take its course. The Crow Assembly has meanwhile started work on dredging major drains in the municipality to ensure free flow of water when it rains. Right, so as part of efforts to curtail flooding in this season, officials of the National Disaster Management Organization and uh, media men are touring a number of companies um, located on flat areas, flat pond areas. Uh, my colleague Selam Amenya is on that uh, trip. He joins us live on the phone line. Selam, what more can you report? Yes, yeah, so um, NADMO is actually uh, taking a look at the industrial area and what happens when uh, it rains. And uh, the first port of call was Axfoam, where because of its position, it happens to be in a low-lying area. Whenever it rains, the water is collected and uh, goes behind uh, uh, the Axfoam company, that is the factory, where it is supposed to go through a, 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 a 0.9 millimeter drain. But because of activity of some other companies, has been reduced by three. That causes a lot of flooding. When it rains, even 30 minutes of rain uh, causes the place to be flooded to a height of 0.5 meters. And uh, we were on the tour with Henry Lee Plastic Plant, who happens to be the Aqua Metro Director of NADMO. Uh, so uh, he was saying that we are asking all the companies to comply with the uh, assets that we have. Uh, can you repeat that? We are asking all companies here in the very Oh, 
1.3 by an adjoining company called Kenneth. So we have to go and talk to them to remove the other and allow the new flow of water to go. All right, so Bamisi, you heard the, the, the Accra Metro Director of NASMO there. He's saying that anything that impedes the flow of water, they are going to make sure that they get rid of it. So this is a caution to all uh, companies inside the industrial area to ensure that they allow for uh, free flow of water, Bamisi. Uh, so, um, uh, just hold on for me a bit. It was a bit difficult uh, hearing the man clearly. Uh, what is he saying? That companies uh, located on waterways should what? Uh, be broken down? How, how do they make access for water flow? Yes, he's, he's, what, what is happening is that most of the companies in the industrial area that were built have been given, uh, they have drains that give access to free uh, flow of water. And uh, because of other redevelopment and redesigning, some of the companies have ended up reducing the size of these drains or blocking them. And this is what they are saying, that they will not uh, countenance those things. They will ensure that proper access is created to allow for the water to flow out. All right, thank you very much, uh, Salam Amenya. Uh, he's with a team of NADMO officials uh, who are touring companies uh, cited on waterways. You're still watching Midday Live here on TV3. And to one of our top stories this hour, unionized staff of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority have hoisted red flags to protest government's inability to ratify the Meridian Port Service Concessionary Agreement. Both staff for Tema and Takwari Port will also wear red attire to drum home their displeasure uh, for one week. There's an easy calm at both ports, Tema and Takrade port, over possible job losses. The woes of workers were dipping after a notice served by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority that some inland container depots were new terminals. It clearly means that 1,200 employees will go home. Unionized workers want government to review the concession agreement which has invested so much operational concession in MPS. They added that more disturbing is that GPHA will not receive any dividends for the next 10 years. TV3's investigations revealed that an interministerial review committee was set up by government in January 2018, headed by the Deputy Minister of Transport, Daniel Titus Nikwate Grover, to assess the proposal submitted by GPHA for the review of the 35-year agreement. The ministry investment at that time, which was thought to be $1.5 billion, was too much. But even today, Revaluation indicates that the, the, the investment the investment is about one point one billion dollars. So some if a company invests one point one billion and, and gets a tax waiver of about eight hundred and thirty two million dollars, the virtual is Ghana that is controlling the the, the, the the port. The the bigger issue is the fact that um there there had been exclusivity rights um guaranteed within the concession agreement that what they are doing um, no company can do so can do the same business. And it is also going to take away a lot of container business from GPHA and on the chain too. There are terminal operators like TCT, um, there are Steve Dock companies, there are labor um, um, uh, companies like Ghana Dock Labor Company. They are all going to lose their jobs. And a number, a huge number of workers are going to lose their jobs. No, because the agreement is said that That cut. Um, if, a, if a vessel brings less than 200, uh, 200 and less containers, they need to go to uh, GPHA. And that uh, one container above 200 containers should go to MPS. And today, most vessels do not bring 200 uh, containers. So, which means that it is going to stifle GPHA of business. And we 
you know, by some, the FG is going to lose about, you know, six, more than 60 percent of its of its uh, container business, and that translates into huge revenue loss for which GPHA would have to then shed off labor. As we talk, we speak today, it's not only GPHA workers that are in red. Ghana Dock Labor Camp, you know, Company, you know, workers are also in red. You know, so why is it that we need to make this huge sacrifice? You know, to be to be to be able to to have a company to exist when other companies would have to lose their business. We hope that government would would um, do the needful because government had already set up a ministerial committee and the report is very clear that the the the, the business the concession agreement is not in the interest of Ghana, it's not in the interest of GPHA, and it's not in the interest of the other stakeholders. And if government has this report, I mean, what it has to do is to um, get um, a renegotiation of the, of the deal. All right, so this is a developing story. Uh, the Corporate Affairs Director of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority had earlier agreed to speak to us on the story. Uh, we're able to reach her um, as at this time. Uh, as and when we do, we'll bring you that story. You're also watching Media Life here on TV3. Let's now go for our MTN video report. This is Citizen Nanik here reporting from the Independent Avenue. This is a pavement that has been destroyed by the recent rains and it's not turning to be a trap for pedestrians. Please, we are calling on attention for an agent resolution to this. It's opposite the former president, Jerry John Rollins, resident. We appreciate if you could please attend to it as soon as possible. Thank you. And just like Anika, you can also send us your MTN video report. You're still watching Media Live here on TV3. We'll take a short break. When we return, we've got international news, we've got sports news, and we've got business news. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the business news segment on Midday Live here on TV3. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission has finalized regulations that will serve as guidelines for real estate investment trusts. The REIT is a collective investment scheme that allows investors to pool resources together for investment in real estate. Since 2010, Ghana has been tagged as experiencing a housing deficit of 1.7 million units. But industry players believe the deficit could be more, with 200,000 units required annually to fix Ghana's housing deficit. Real Estate Investment Trust, RIT, is a collective investment scheme for real estate investment. It allows for investment into real estate by a person or group of persons without necessarily requiring them to owe the brick and mortar. Director General of the Security Exchange Reverend Daniel observed the scheme will where the reeds have been used uh, to really transform uh, the real estate uh, sector, in particular the housing uh, issues. The Securities and Exchange Commission has finalized the regulations for the collective real estate investment scheme. We've worked on the guidelines, we've done some engagement with the market. We always do that so that the market's view is reflected in the guidelines. And we are at the point where we are ready to issue it as, as guidelines. In the 2018 and 2019 budgets, the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, mentioned the scheme and the SEC boss noted its importance. It's one of the interventions that would really help in uh, addressing to a large measure the challenges with uh, housing here. 
the Real Estate Investment Trust will benefit the individual in the form of returns through dividends and for those in the real estate business as a source of funding. If the portfolio in the real estate is good, then dividends will be good. In other news, Ambassador ahead of the European Union delegation to Ghana, place to ensure monies given to government by the European Union to execute projects are used for its intended purposes. She has lauded the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda by government, which she says will strengthen the Ghana-EU relations. Youth unemployment is a major socio-economic problem in Ghana and many other African countries, even though Ghana's growth performance has been on the rise. Young people between the ages of 15 and 35 make up about a third of Ghana's population. To help government address the issue, the European Union will in June this year launch a 20 million euro project to help provide skills training to empower the youth. The project is to help the youth to engage in viable economic activities in their respective local communities. The ambassador and head of the European Union delegation to Ghana, Diana Akonsia, says rigorous measures are in place to ensure policies pursued by the EU achieve optimum results. We audit our projects. Uh, we ask for very detailed accounts uh, and then reports on achievement on the after that they are closed. So there is a very strong control mechanism. Actually, there are a lot of procedures in place that are so complicated that sometimes our beneficiaries are not very happy. But this is the reality. We need that to make sure, as you said, that uh, the money is going to good use. It's the money of the European taxpayers, and so we want it to go to good use. The EU head to Ghana pointed out that the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda being pursued by the current administration will ensure a more strengthened relationship with the EU. During these days, the Ghana Beyond Aid is going to get more definition because there is going to be a strategy to be published. For the moment, Ghana Beyond Aid is a concept and a change of mentality. We have to do it for ourselves. We have to work now not to depend on aid in the future. Well, we like this very much because on our side, we, in fact, we're doing the same. We're trying to, to have in the European Union the same mentality shift that the Ghana Beyond Aid is doing in Ghana. Um, we want to move from a donor-recipient relationship to a partnership of equals, which is based on uh, common interests, shared values. The aim of the project is to equip the youth with employable and managerial skills that would offer them decent jobs locally to stem illegal migration to Europe. Well, that's all for the very latest in business news. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, 3news.com. Well, up next, we bring you an update uh, of the Quill, a bigger part of the Easter festivities. And this time, we're in JKT. Johnny Hughes bring us, brings us updates uh, from JKT. It's a Saturday night at our console, the Volta Hotel to be specific, and we promised you that we're going to have an open-air high-life session, a happy hour session, that is part of our four-day trip to the eastern region, Jekiti. That's the final destination, but the happy hour session is happening tonight at the Volta Hotel, and I can tell you, it's a full house. Highlight music from the Ghana Police Band from the eastern region, blasting in the background, and you can... Uh, Hot, sizzling, and crispy uh, grills right now. There's also a cash bar where patrons are thronging in and out to have the taste of their drink of their choice. It was a full house. The crowds were happy and charged with good music and dance. Chilled drinks. Food and grills. MP for Sujaman Thomas Ampemnyako found great company and was actively involved in the night of fun. They spoke with TV3 News. In fact, it is marvelous. Um, with the presence of TV3, our Easter celebration is sent to a different level. And so we are very, very excited. 
the talk of town is that TV3 has really rejuvenated Akosombo, and we want your presence here to be permanent. Because we are in Takwa and we have come here, so we have seen something and we are taking it back to Takwa. Uh, we are having fun here, yes. and I think we are enjoying ourselves. Yes. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Hey, hello. We are having fun in the period. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I see. Really, yes. Yeah. The icing on the cake was served at the Endowa Night Club where DJ Larry was in full charge. Well, if you weren't there, you missed a great deal because we're all there. We had a lot of fun and uh, you've just got to prepare for next year. At uh, the same time, Easter, and join us at JKT uh, for all the fun and excitement. Now to other news, and founder of One Mike Entertainment, Ochame Kwame, has launched his latest album titled Made in Ghana at Plus 223 Jazz Bar and Grill. The Made in Ghana album highlights uh, virtues across of various regions in Ghana and featured artists such as Kwame Eugene, Kidi, Wiyala, and Feli Nuna. <laughs> A Chiamme Kwame, as is widely known, is making waves with the Made in Ghana campaign. The 14 track album features 10 different artists from all the initial 10 regions and picks different sounds and sights all over the country. Family, friends, and other industry players gathered at the Plus 233 Jazz Bar and Grill to unveil the latest project. The theme song I Am Made in Ghana features Kitty. Other great tunes of the Made in Ghana album include Inobi Mamata featuring Kwame Eugene, Melon featuring Felinuna, Boga Tanga Girl featuring Abiana and Atongo Zimba, and Dictana featuring Riala and Kin Ralph. Show your ring if you don't have a body, show your face. To Rob Doctor, the Made in Ghana album is his most important album as it promotes trade and build nationalism. But this is the album that I've done that says I am made in Ghana. This one is about my people, it's about self. That means my environment, my land, my clothes, my philosophies, my traditions, my culture. And so I think this is the most important thing I have done in my whole life. All right, so uh, that's how we conclude Midday Live here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.news.com.